Hey guys, it's Turok, and today the uh, I'm doing the review of the next uh, next chapter of next chapter of One Piece, chapter 1059 just came out, and this is a good one. This is a uh, what well, like I'm not I'm a little tired today, so my excitement isn't at levels that you can see with other rev some other reviewers like um or like teching. I like when I watch his reviews. He is full of energy, and um, I can't uh, emulate that and uh, copy that kind of energy. But this chapter was great, and uh, we had a uh, we had a break, and uh, I was wondering what Oda was going to go into next. I was going to take this those thing off. I got all this cat hair on me, but I'm too hot with this on. Hold on, and and um, Oda did disappoint with this chapter. We uh. We get a lot, I'm gonna put the, get my tail up right in here. No, technical errors, doing it live, or recording. Oda, last chapter, uh, gave us information on the Cross Guild, which is a new organization of pirates with Buggy at the head, and uh, Mihawk and Crocodile with him, and uh, at his like executives as it would appear to the world. But we find the behind the scenes from the last chapter uh, where we figure out that what's actually happened is that uh, Crocodile loaned hmm. I should sit right there. Crocodile Crocodile loaned Buggy money to start up his business two years ago. The business Buggy has where as his, in, under his warlord part. And um, he um, I should turn off these distractions. And Buggy began this business of uh, being some kind of a oh God, what was it exactly? He's tra helping a delivery service, I think, a kind of UPS or FedEx of the One Piece world, delivering things internationally. And um, it appears though that Buggy's business was not as successful as it appeared. He had too many people under his employ, uh, and then he lost those giants, which I. I think we're I had left to join Luffy because well first I think they were captured at Doflamingo's Island by Doflamingo at least that one was right and he was forced to fight in the Coliseum that Doflamingo has and uh, uh, so Buggy uh, had too many people there and he wasn't making enough of money as he we thought he was so I guess the government too government too is not giving him a whole much which also now that I think about it, it makes me wonder um, if Mihawk has like his own private, uh, a lot of private, um, his own funds, because he looks like he lived pretty well in that, uh, his own island he had just been living on that he abandoned because he was being uh, perpetually you know, bombarded by the uh, Marines. And so he leaves, and when he was preparing to leave, this is when Crocodile comes in with him, not the, to bring this together, Crocodile, contacted Mihawk and they wanted to work together to keep uh, to keep the uh, Marines uh, well I'm wondering what Cro Crocodile was trying to gain out of that uh, I forget what was might have been said there but Crocodile wanted Mihawk to join up with him and I'm thinking Crocodile's got some other agenda going on still that we don't know about probably to do with the One Piece because I'm pretty sure he wanted yeah he wanted to be King of the Pirates back in his younger days and he tried to take out Whitebeard but that did not work, and so he had sought to find Pluton, and his information at the time told him it had it was in uh, Alabasta. So he enacted that plan, and even though that's all failed, I'm certain someone like him, uh, who has that kind of agenda, that that kind of uh, goal, I should say, his goal to gain the One Piece would not be diminished at all, and he's just the kind of guy that he's that Bond villain type. The layered plans, and then he's got an idea of how to gain that. Who uh, takes his time to get to it? Basically, he's not the same as someone like uh, Luffy or Kid, who will who want to get it right away. Well, Luffy doesn't want to get it right away, but uh, well, <laughs> maybe in a way he does. If he, if Luffy had got to the One Piece. In like 200 chapters, I'm sure he would have like been happy to be have it then. But he's also enjoying the journey there. But at the same time, he does. He's very. Um, I'm saying he 
he's different from Crocodile because in other situa situations he is quite a bit different uh, it, from how, I, I suspect from how Crocodile is based upon we have this long rap sheet of behavior from Luffy of uh, other situations especially when he sees things going wrong with other people where he wants to go and solve it right away so I'm just insinuating that given that he may be, he, he compared to Crocodile doesn't want to make long, big, big plans basically in order to get to One Piece. He wants to just get from island to island, he'll have fun there, and then he's like, okay, let's off to the next island to find the One Piece. But Crocodile knows, Crocodile is basically, he's like more worldly quite a bit. Um, a lot of characters really are compared to Luffy, but Crocodile, given his, understanding his own limitations now and how big the world is and all the factions and uh, the powers that be, the government and other criminal elements out there has, makes these plans in order to gain the same well, as we knew then, he wants to gain the same yeah, thing as Luffy but he knows he can't just rush to it comparatively to what Luffy does so yeah, right back to Mihawk he, he has Mihawk he gets Mihawk to come and work with him so we don't know why he exactly. Uh, I'm. What I'm getting at is why. Why would he want Mihawk with him? He, he, well, like is he just using Mihawk's mu as the muscle? I think I implied that last time. So we'll find that out later. So he he comes to Buggy's island, and we find out that Buggy doesn't have the money anymore. So he, but Buggy offers to uh, let Crocodile use whatever. Uh, uh, resources and uh, his um, all these set up his setup there with his his connections and his uh, infrastructure he has available there Crocodile he just offers Crocodile to take advantage of that to help him and uh, and then Crocodile takes that up because he, he he doesn't he can't squeeze the money out of uh, Buggy and killing him won't really get him that much satisfaction so that's uh there and then Mihawk and him, uh, the it it's Mihawks, not Mihawks. Buggy's mana is the one who causes this confusion that the world. It's confusion uh, that it's not confusion. Well, the world thinks Buggy's in charge of this, but Buggy really isn't. And Crocodile, and Mihawk are quite upset when they find out about this. That so, Buggy's men think that uh, he's the one in charge of this, and he created this plan. And then fake flyers telling the world that, and he gets. A lot of heat from um, Mihawk and Crocodile when they find out about this. But Crocodile is like, not Crocodile, Mihawk says, eh, yeah, let's just leave it like this because uh, it'll kick the heat off our backs. And the world, most of the world doesn't understand anyways how weak Buggy really is, so they're going along with it too. And convinced by it, so it works out. And then the other thing just briefly showed... We got some, uh, we got, oh yeah, we got the, bomb, we got a lot of bounties in the last chapter, mostly with the straw hats, and then we found out about what Buggy, uh, Buggy's, yeah, Buggy's exact, we found out Buggy's exact bounty now, uh, I know his bounty was at 15 million way back in the beginning of the series, and uh, I don't think they ever gave us another one after that, up until now, and he became a warlord, so whatever, if he had gained any p bounty, it would have been frozen, obviously. But now, so we got his bounty, Mihawks, Crocodiles, and uh, we also got the Straw Hats, and we found out, uh, we found out that Crocodile and Mihawk have a very significant bounty, as well as Buggy, and Mihawks is, Mihawks is actually the highest, and it's at a level that I am satisfied with, because given his strength, as I talked about before, he is basically a Yonko level uh, uh, um, opponent, uh, a person in the world. He has the kind of uh, top of the top of the hill, king of the hill power that d contend with people like uh, Kaido or uh, Whitebeard and or Roger. And so his bounty, he doesn't have his own crew in that, which would probably raise his bounty even more. But his bounty right now is. 3.5 plus billion berries and uh, I, I'm really happy with that. I, he just 
he uh, he probably yeah was the strongest of the blood the the um of the uh, warlords. I always thought it was just it was always seemed like such a odd disparity with with the uh, warlords with like crocodile or Moria closer to the bottom. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking more like physical abilities and whatnot with. Boa and Hancock have an interesting ability, and Moria too, though, but they're not quite as physically imposing as Doflamingo is definitely higher up, Bartholomew, Kuma, and Mihawk being much higher up. And then we found Crocodile's bounty, which is about 2 billion, and the buggies is like 3.1 something. And so there, and then we got an interesting tidbit about Mihawk's uh, backstory. We found out that he used to be a, a marine hunter. Probably was seeking uh, opponents there. It seems like Mihawk was a prodigy of sorts when he was very young. Probably similar to um, Kaido. Kind of like Kaido. Quite a bit like Kaido, I would say. When he, and, and so he, Kaido got captured a lot by the Marines. And oh, actually, he was given to the Marines first and captured a lot by the Marines. And Mihawk seemed to have been under a similar uh, 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 fighting with the Marines all the time where he. He, he probably was so strong at a young age, like Kaido, that in this case, and, uh, Mihawk wanted to seek out opponents there, as well as anywhere else he could. And it's, uh, as far as we know, uh, as far as rivals his own age or such, uh, Shanks was the only one he ever uh, dueled with many times. I'm surprised, uh, well, because Whitebeard probably wouldn't want to... Uh, we don't want to deal with a youngster like him, even if he was as powerful as him. I'm surprised Whitebeard, uh, I was going to say Whitebeard, I'd be surprised that Whitebeard wouldn't want to keep fighting with him. But Whitebeard doesn't seem like the type who wants to fight just for fun. He uses his strength for his, he was using his strength for the goal of protecting he, those who are his family. So anyways, yeah, we got bounties of uh, the other... And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna jump ahead to the chapter now. I spent enough time recapping this stuff. Uh, so this chapter, we start off with um, actually, yeah. There's something else happening here. I didn't. I to, there's, there's a quick thing here. We find out that uh, oh, that's right. So we find here. This was interesting. I forgot about this. I was reading the other stuff after. The um, Marco meets up briefly with Shanks's crew, and uh, oh, that's right. So Shanks's crew gives Marco a ride back to where he was living, which is Whitebeard's Island, Whitebeard's hometown. And uh, he's like, "I'm not gonna join up with you guys." I they, they're asking, "Why can't you, are you not gonna really join up with us?" And Marco's just done with doing all the fighting, I guess. And even though he's like, he's a little younger than Sh uh, Shanks, isn't he? I know they're close to the same age, but he doesn't want to join up with uh, doing any more of this fighting stuff. He only did this, I think, to really help the, the Straw Hats. Was that why? He, he wanted to help the Straw Hats. And uh, what was his other goal? I don't really know. I feel like I'm missing something with that. But so we also now jump to a brief flashback showing Yamato telling um, telling uh, Lupi and, and Jinbei and the others how she's not going to join the crew right now his crew, because she wants to stay, basically she wants to stay on uh, Wano and help protect it from people like the Marines, because they just had Animal Green Bowl and others like that. So she, um, I wonder if that means she'll join later. I feel like I'm missing something there too. Oh, am I missing, let's see. Okay, but she's not going to tell, well, she's planning on not telling uh, Momo that she's staying for that reason, because Momo wants to be the protector of Wano now, but, so Yamato knows he'll need more help, so she's got to say, she's make an excuse up, and she's planning on something already on that. Uh, and we briefly see, uh, yeah, this fla at this flashback, Marco was still on Wano, and he talks to Luffy, and Luffy thanks him for helping him at the uh, Marine Ford siege back two years ago. So now this is where we get to the meat and potatoes of the uh, this chapter. 
So this chapter, we jumped to uh, Boa Hancock's island. And the last thing we saw with her was that they were preparing for the Marines to come attack them because uh, she's one of the was one of the warlords and the warlord system got disbanded a few weeks ago and so Marines were being dispatched all over to go after all of them. We saw that with Mihawk and uh, we saw with everyone really. We, don't, we still don't know what happened with um, that self-proclaimed uh, Whitebeard son and his mother and um, we know what happened with Buggy. We know what happened with Bo. We're gonna find out what happened with Bo Hancock here and Mihawk. Who was the others? Anyways, the Marines went after all of them, and Kobe was the one sent to get Bo Hancock. And uh, they're trying to figure out what they should do now because the Marines keep coming, and they're uh, we don't know if they can keep warding them off. It seems. And <laughs> Bohawk, despite all this, Hancock's still just thinking about marrying Luffy. And uh, I almost wonder if they shouldn't. Actually, I wonder now. That would be an interesting strategy. What if Hancock could get Luffy to uh, convince him to marry her in a way where. See, they have to convince Luffy to do this. The, show, the goal of this would be to protect her island by saying. It's under the protection of the new emperor of the sea. Because Luffy's starting to do this now, I think. He did this with Wano. He's going to make it, making these places his protectorate. Much like the other, uh, Whitebeard has done. Whitebeard used to protect, uh, Fishman Island. And now he's going to have Wano as his protectorate. Uh, he's got, he gave the flag, a flag, copies of his flag to, uh, Momo recently. What if, uh, Boa Hancock could find a way to convince Luffy that to protect her island and she'd probably have to say she'd probably want to say to um, I'm married to him in order to really scare some of the Marines off I say no like gosh now this former uh, this Empress and she's already yeah there's a look even better she's already calls herself the Empress of this island now she'd be the Empress married to an Emperor and she, they're together, and you know, her island will become his ally even closer through a marriage, <laughs> much like we see in other types of shows where it's, or, uh, it's been done historically where alliances are made by other countries having children marry each other so that uh, her island would be able to sway the, young, the other Marines from coming and attacking her. Although, what we find out happens here probably would not have a, uh, uh, this idea I'm trying up, coming up with would not protect her from what's about what happened to her a few weeks ago. No. So we find out what happens a few weeks ago is that the, um, the vice, they sent a vice admiral, uh, and this guy's familiar, but I can't recall where I've seen him. And he looks kind of like Bluto from, um, Popeye. He's there, he's there with his navy and they're bombarding the island first with cannon fire. And they have brought along with them, we're going to find out about these new pacifistas. And these things that look very interesting. And uh, we find out the pacifistas here that the uh, Navy has now, that given to them by uh, uh, the Vegapunk monster designed, look like uh, children with wings. Kind of like, um, at first that made me think of Skypeans. I know there's var varieties of them and I can't recall which ones. But as you know, with the wings, right? These, given the description we find later, these um, uh, pacifistas, I wonder if they're being based upon, uh, I think, what are they called? Lumerians, like King is, because they got the skin cut, similar skin color and hair color that he has. And that's right, he has wings as well. I was thinking of Skypeans, but he has wings too. And does that mean the Lumerians are related to the Skypeans? Something to look into later. So the the uh, the the uh, the uh, Amazon citizens are having a hard time fighting these Lumer uh, pacifistas. They seem to be uh, crushing the uh, re crushing her her uh, boat Hancock's uh, uh, her army. The, the 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 other pirates are having a hard time dealing with that. And to make the things to make things even worse, though. Uh, we find out where Blackbeard headed to. We saw a while back he was going to go somewhere 
and I am assumed he was coming to Wano and he was going to come right after the fighting was over to get Big Mom and Kaido's fruit, especially Big Mom's, because hers is definitely one of the strongest we've seen in the series. Maybe he's going to do that later, but no, he decided to go after Boa Hancock for her fruit. And he brings some of his big captain, his main captains with him, his, his right hand men. He's got, um, oh, I don't know the name. I should pull him up. I know it's got, got the guy who's the, uh, who drinks a lot. I mean, he's, he's got the one lady who's her, who's got, now he's got, um, that new, the fruit from, um, let me pull it up. Yeah, so he has Katarina and Vasco with him. And uh, I don't know if Vasco has a devil fruit, but we know Katrina, I think, now has the fruit where she, uh, the invisible fruit that, um, what's his name, Absalom, one of Moria's former subordinates ha had. So, uh, yes, Blackbeard is here to get her fruit. He wants her ability, which is a pretty significant one, too, where it can immobilize uh, people, uh, yeah, I was going to say opposite sex, but I think it doesn't matter. As long as someone else is attracted physically to the person who has Boa Hancock's fruit, that person, and in this case Hancock, can immobilize them, basically turning them into stone, a la Medusa from Greek mythology. But she shoots like these love arrows. And uh, uh, part of the reason, I guess, I don't know if that was the main, really a reason, but I mean, Luffy is probably the, one of the only, or probably the only one we've seen, person we've seen in this, uh, Sorry, fly. Uh, person we've seen in the uh, series who's immune to her powers. He's just not uh, physically interested in people of uh, any sex in any uh, sexual way. <laughs> he just wants, he's just like, he's basically still a kid inside, I guess, is one way to look at it. So uh, they come in, and uh, the Marines are like, what do we do? The Marines want to fight him right away, the other Marines, but the Vice Admiral wants to get orders from his uh, support, from the higher ups. And uh, Blackbeard looks like he, ch he kind of just chases, not chases them off, he forces them out of the way by uh, using Whitebeard's fruit, the Guru Guru Nomi, to just throw them away. And so they basically hold no, are unable to stop them, him at all. So we can see now that some vice admirals, probably, maybe perhaps all of them, would not be able to stop him in any way. It would take the, an admiral, I think, to really stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, um, Blackbeard. Although, I would be interested to see how, because so far, the admirals we've seen uh, usually rely on their very potent devil fruits to deal with opponents. You, we had Aokiji and uh, uh, Akainu and... Uh, um, what's his name with the light fruit and then those, those fruits make them very intimidating and uh, very uh, top of the hill uh, dangerous foes but Blackbeard's fruit negates other devil fruits and uh, so I, I, I assume they all know hockey but I, I just don't know if anyone other I, I could see a Kainu standing up to um, maybe even Fujitora, because he's also a swordsman, fighting Blackbeard without using their fruit powers. Uh, come on, Wabba. So, anyways, yeah, the other Marines are, th are thrown back by him using Whitebeard's fruit, actually. And then, uh, we see Kobe now. Actually, so Kobe's here, well, looks like Kobe, that's right, so there was the other Vice Admiral there, but looks like Kobe's already on the island fighting with, with Marines, fighting with Boa's pirates, and laying siege to her castle, and they're trying to, he's trying to convince her to uh, uh, submit and come with him willingly, and, uh, and she's, she's not having that, cause, because, she was a, because she was a slave one, she's not going to become anyone's prisoner, even like, if in under the better con best conditions, and while we have that happening, this is my one of my favorite parts of this chapter. There's a 
a great moment coming up at the end, if you've read it already. But I was impressed by this because Blackbeard faces off against a pacifista and he himself is not a bit, seems a bit intimidated by them. He, uh, and, and this is where we get the description of them, which it, from Blackbeard himself saying about what, how they look like Lumerians, basically. And, uh, oh, that's right, because what happened, starting to happen is Blackbeard must have sent many of his, his, uh, his regular troops to the, uh, onto the island, and they're getting wasted by these pacifistas easily. Uh, and uh, this pacifista even comes after Blackbeard, and he has to use hockey in order to protect himself. Wait, is that his hockey? Yeah, I think he's using hockey for the first time that we've seen to defend himself from the uh, pacifistas coming, uh, charging after him. And if I understand this next scene right, it seems he ends up using his darkness fruit to suck it up into a black hole in order to get rid of it. So this thing's physical abilities are not to be trifled with. Uh, whether or not there'll be something that uh, Zoro or uh, someone like Kaido, Kaido could handle would be something that we're yet to under know for sure yet. But while that, so we have a brief skirmish there. But then we switch to Hancock still dealing with Marines coming after her and she uh, uses her powers to turn them all to stone and she even gets the Vice Admiral that's there. She gets Hamepo and uh, so now we have, a, I don't know if this is the same, no this must be a different pacifista. There was at least two of them here. Another pacifista though is, they seem, these pacifistas seem like they're a bit out of control and on a rampage in a sense and Kobe here has to stop this one from uh, uh, from just going around, Hamepo's worried about it, not Hamepo, Kobe's worried about it, uh, destroy, hurting the other Marines who have been turned to stone, and he has to order it to stop. But then we quickly, is this all the right chapters? I feel like I'm missing some stuff here. Hold on. Hold on, I'm going to check something. Who's a kitty cat? Well, anyways, I was just double checking. So this quickly, we, we switch over now to Blackbeard appearing, uh, getting in, coming closer to uh, getting into the fray here, and he has Boa Hancock captured, uh, holding on. He's holding with one of the throat, and you can tell he's using his fruit because there's like these dark tendrils around his left arm, and he's using it to keep her from using her fruit on him. Uh, so somehow he got in close, probably. He had his troops waiting in, uh, going in and distracting her or holding her, uh, keeping her attention so that she couldn't get him in time. And uh, we find out here how he's had her eye, his, his eye, he says that he's been watching her for a while and wanting her power. And, uh, and she warns him, like, you can't just take my power. If you do now, if you just take it now, your, your troops will end up staying as uh, in stone, and this, uh, this Kobe we see there is quite upset by this too. And uh, now we get something interesting here where Kobe's, uh, Kobe's there and uh, Kobe and Blackbeard have a bit of exchange where Co Blackbeard thanks Kobe for uh, helping him at the Rocky Port incident, right? And uh, he talks about how what you did there, Blackbeard says, whatever you did there helped me take over the pirate island. So it looks like here Blackbeard also wants his, some of his troops, would like to have some of his troops turned back into normal, and Kobe does too. And of course, but so Boa here makes a, a statement about like if I'll turn everyone back to normal of both your 
your your people if you leave my island but so blackbeard doesn't even want doesn't really care here at this point he uh just figures he should just kill her and take the fruit power and uh, because he's worried that if he lets her go here she'll just end up turning him into stone so he is a bit afraid of her own her power uh turning him in, even into stone which would be interesting to see if he could block it though with his fruit but this is where the best part of this chapter comes in and we have Rayleigh coming in to break up the situation somehow he must have been tipped off to what's happened and uh even Blackbeard here is definitely afraid of dealing with someone like Rayleigh and uh and Kobe he's just surprised he's completely flabbergasted that he's come up here and uh so he he's basically pulling, doing the same kind of thing we saw Shanks do at the uh, Marine Ford siege and forcing everyone to back down and leave. And so this is the end where the end of the flashback does happens. And uh, we go back to the present day. And we see Rayleigh and um, oh, what's her name? They showed here. No, that's not her name. Oh, what's her name? His his girlfriend. Oh, what's her name? Oh yeah, Shaggy. Shaggy? Why don't they say it there? They have like her full name. She's there with Rayleigh, and this is a, back in the present day, we see Rayleigh, Shaggy, that's right, Shaggy, I think it was in the anime. Shaggy are sitting together with Boa, her grandmother, and um, her other sister there, the, the larger one. And uh, so we learned something interesting here too, that Vegapunk has created paddle, sea stone paddle ships that help make it easier for them to traverse the com belt. So now Boa's place isn't safe anymore because it was a... Uh, oh, that's right. So even though the Navy has like formidable battleships, if I recall correctly, back when they were... Uh, that one of the Vice Admiral had come to her island to escort her... Because they needed... They, uh, to Marine Ford to help fight Whitebeard, they were having to ward off um, the Sea Kings. So wait, how would Sea Stone, Sea Stone really help ward them off? I'm not sure, but this, this is implying that it's much easier for them at least to get around the, it must be helping them somehow, that it's easier for them to traverse the um, com belt now. But, and right now though, even though like, uh, um, Blackbeard was quite scared of, uh, and his, he, of um, Rayleigh, Rayleigh here, Feels like he may not still been able to win in a fight there, especially with White Beard, Blackbeard's allies being there. And uh, we get something else interesting here. Where I was thinking about the Lumerians, but uh, one of uh, both of um, Boa's sisters remark how one of them actually resembled an appearance Boa as a, a child. Uh, Okay, and so the last thing we get here now is that, and even though this incident with uh, Blackbeard and Kobe was uh, this uh, ended in uh, without a big fight, it looks like Blackbeard in leaving though he took Kobe as a prisoner, so now he must have like no must have been like a deal they had to make. He he was not gonna leave without something. But to benefit him, he went, he came there for Boa's fruit power, uh, almost had it, and then Rayleigh came in, dispersed it, the, the, and disrupted this his progress and and forced him to back down. And you could tell Blackbeard was afraid to have a fight with him right then and there. He probably would have preferred to have his whole crew with him and gang up on Rayleigh, much like they did to Whitebeard. Even though Whitebeard was very sick at the time, they were still scared of him. Uh, Whitebeard and 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 would prefer numbers to help the fight, which frankly is a smart thing to do. But in the One Piece world, you can tell that would be very frowned upon because everyone's like honorable one-on-one -on -one combat. But anyways, Kobe. Now we end off with the hot, the this like cliffhanger, you could say, kind of like we did recently with finding out about uh, um, 
Sabo apparently killing uh, the thing where Sabo apparently killed King Cobra. Now we're just seeing about so this is probably this is for sure though it seems that the uh, that Kobe has been taken by the Blackbeard Pirates. So this makes me wonder if uh, Luffy finds this out right away if he'll uh, want to well he will want to will go after Blackbeard right away. Because he's supposed to, we're hopefully, we're hoping he's on his way to Elbaf and we'll get more information about that stuff there and his own, his new devil fruit, uh, as we understand it now. So, uh, that's it today. This is a good chapter. We got, we got quite a bit here. Again. Yep, that's it.